Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. This latest paper from Dr. David Sinclair, chemically induced reprogramming to reverse cellular aging, has garnered some interest in the aging community, so I thought that I would go through it today. There are epigenetic changes with aging, which is how the epigenetic biological clocks work. These changes have been shown to be reversible. Three of the four Yamanaka factors, OCT4, SOX2, and KLF4, have been shown to restore a more youthful epigenetic profile without changing the nature of the cell through rearrangement of the methylation markers. In the study, they looked for small molecules which would have the same effect as the Yamanaka factors, which is to say to be able to change the epigenetic state to that of a younger cell. In order to quickly screen candidate molecules, they developed a new test called the nucleocytoplasmic compartmentalization assay, as well as a transcriptomic clock. They identified six cocktails of molecules which restored a genome-wide youthful profile without impacting cell identity. And in summary, cellular rejuvenation can be achieved by chemicals as well as genetically. Before we jump into the paper, a quick review on Yamanaka factors and cellular reprogramming. The original Yamanaka factors consisted of four genes, OCT34, SOX2, KLF4, and CMIC. In the study, only OCT, SOX, and KLF were used as CMIC can cause cancer and previous studies by the Sinclair lab had shown that it is not required for partial reprogramming. When the Yamanaka factors are expressed in a cell, they will turn it back into an induced pluripotent stem cell or an iPSC. This is a kind of cell that can become any other kind of cell, but in the process loses its identity as the kind of cell that it was originally. For today's discussion, the important property of iPSCs is that they have an age of zero years old. So as well as being converted to a stem cell, they are also being rejuvenated. To reprogram a cell in vivo, that is in living tissue, we want the cell to remain the same type of cell, just to become younger. So the idea is to stop the process when the cell has a younger epigenetic arrangement, but before it loses its identity. This has been shown by expressing the Yamanaka factors intermittently or for short periods of time. In this study, the team is trying to replicate this with small molecules. Why is this important? Gene therapy has a few drawbacks that small molecules avoid. Delivery is difficult, normally involving a viral vector, which can lead to issues with immune response. There is also the need to control the new genetic material, which can remain embedded in the cell for a long period of time. All of this adds to the complexity and cost, whereas delivery of small molecules is much simpler and better understood. Getting back to the study, in the first part, the authors created a test that can look for and quantify the rejuvenation of cells in a reliable and automated way. This was needed to be able to quickly screen the candidate molecules. They chose to use senescent cells which were generated through repeated replication, as this leads to an older epigenetic age, whereas stress-induced senescence does not age the cell. One of the characteristics of an aging cell, and when it becomes senescent, is that the proteins in the nucleus and cytoplasm, that is the rest of the cell, which should be separate, become mixed up. Proteins which belong outside the nucleus have a region called the nuclear export signal, or NES, while those which belong inside the nucleus are marked with a nuclear localization signal, or NLS. The authors marked the former with a green fluorescent and the latter with a red. So as in this young cell, we should see red in the nucleus and green elsewhere, and the two should be clearly separated. In validating the test, the authors first confirmed that senescent cells had the expected phenotype and that their tests would detect it. In these graphs, DAPI is a stain which binds to DNA and so will be found in the nucleus. We can see that in the quiescent cell, that is one that is not dividing but is otherwise healthy, the M cherry red tie and DAPI are co-located, while the GFP green dye is not, showing a correct localization of the proteins. In a senescent cell, this pattern becomes disturbed showing proteins which belong in the cytoplasm are in the nucleus and vice versa. 
This graph shows the level of correlation of the location for the two fluorescent dyes in the two cell types where less correlation was better. They wanted to see if they could rescue senescent cells and the incorrect location of proteins by rejuvenating the cell. Initially, they used Yamanaka factors to validate the test. On the graph, the commonality with green and red is greater in the senescent cell, but this is reduced with the expression of OSK. Having validated the test, they then took a set of small molecules which had shown the ability to reprogram cells into IPCSs in mice and humans. Here are five molecules which had been used in mice and six from humans. From these, they created six cocktails, three from the mouse molecules and three from the human. The cocktails were based on these molecules, but also included some others from an original list of 80. These cocktails were called C1 to C6. They then tested the different cocktails on senescent cells. Just like in the case of the Yamanaka factors, the locations of the protein in the cells were significantly changed to a healthier profile, as shown in the quiescent cell. They looked at the age of the cells using a transcriptomic clock that they had also developed and had been trained on rat and human cells, as well as a clock trained on chronological age with human cells. In the results, we can see that the senescent cell is older than the quiescent cell, but the cells treated with the cocktail of chemicals are even younger than the original quiescent cell. Treating cells with Yamanaka factors normally takes around four days, so they use the same period for the chemicals. And the best cocktail, C1, saw a reduction in epigenetic age of more than three years. Finally, they looked at which sets of genes were up or down regulated. Those associated with respiration pathways were upregulated and inflammation were downregulated. It's interesting to note that despite the differences in the cocktail, there was considerable commonality in the changed gene expression. It has to be remembered that this is an initial test in vitro only and will require much work to verify efficacy and safety in animal models. Also, the test used was on senescent cells. How good a proxy this is for rejuvenating normal cells is an open question. They look for the expression of proteins associated with pluripotency, such as nanog, and did not find them, which is a good thing, showing that the cells had retained their identity. It's exciting to see that the rejuvenation of cells is possible with small molecules, and I look forward to seeing further developments. I hope that you found this video helpful. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon. Thank you.